Welcome, folks, to a brand new episode of Smoke Him If You Got Him. And I am the Oracle of Oxford County, Jeremiah Charlton. And this is my compatriot, G.I. Alamo, the one that your mother told you about. That is so accurate. So, so very accurate. And we well, the name of the podcast here. is Smoke Have You Got Him. That is correct. And, and there's a very simple uh, rule here. Uh, you smoke them if you got them. Here's the deal. We're going to play a record today, a great record. Not to say the stuff we've played before hasn't been great. It's just consistency, folks. We're going to go side A and side B. Before we hit these sides, you've got to roll one, smoke it, listen to the side, and come talk to us about it, okay? And we're going to do the same thing for the B side. Now, for today's album, please, Oracle, give us guidance. Now, today's actually special because this yeah. is our first double album yeah so we have we have actually a little little curveball in the rules okay i'm gonna be nice to you guys okay because i can't expect you to smoke four joints in this this album because you're just gonna go to sleep okay it's it's, yeah it's only because it's the first season this is for you to build up endurance you know like you can try but i know what's gonna happen so (laughs) here's my advice here's my advice you're going to smoke half of one. Okay, okay. Side A, you know, smoke the other half, side B. Mm. Then you get the other joint out, smoke that, you know. That way, we're still good. You know, we're still two joints. We but can still talk. We're, 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 yeah, we're, we're yeah. spreading it out. Also, I want to I wanna throw in a coffee. Throw mm. in a little coffee in there, okay, to help you on this journey. Now, now, don't let that be misleading. Like, this is a sleepy album. Okay, it ain't. It's just we want to, we want you to stick with us because uh, it's a long journey. Now, don't, and also don't get too scared, folks. You're like, oh man, how long not is this thing going to be? No, no, it's only, I think it's an, an hour and six minutes. Okay, yep. it's not that big of a deal, folks. So, yeah. um, they just could only do like forty six or something like that, good minutes on vinyl back in the day. So, double album we got, and the name of this album, wonderful, wonderful album, is. Tans der Lemmings by Amandul 2. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One more time, folks. Tans der Lemmings, Amandul 2. Look it up, please. You can find it anywhere that records are streaming. Look around. Yep. You will find it. This is a 1971 record. Um, and uh, and I'm stoked to hear this side. Eh? So can we just can we just get to it? Let's go for it, boys. Smoke if you got them. And we're back. Well, right off the bat, this is this is a great way to come back after uh, after T two. Uh, I feel strongly about this. I feel happy about this album. Um, that first track was about fifteen minutes, huh? Have but, you? Well, it was it was broken up, right? Like it's uh... in that in that weird seventies way of breaking things up. Yeah. Yeah, in the prog prog breakup, but they had like little uh, sections. But to me, side A, I dig it. Yeah. I dig it. Now, uh, I had never heard this album before. I'd heard I have Almondul two albums, right? In my collection, and they have, they have a one. big collection of, of albums. I the same same here. I haven't specifically listened to this particular release, but I heard other Almondul um stuff now. So this one, so uh, how does this compare to other Amandul to you? Do you like it more or less, the same? I like, I like from the first uh, hit of the music and the sound, I like this album. I knew three minutes in that I would like the rest of the album. And once it got to the other point, I knew that the rest of the remainder of these albums were going to be killer. So one thing that I want to point out is we have a consistency here with um, not only recommendations, but the instrumentation. And stand out for me from the get-go is the percussion section of this album. The drums and the bass in this album. Mm, the bass, nice. That, that was the stand-up to me, especially the first Ooh. first track. Also, a little bit um, on the first side the vocals were like a little bit like Bowie, a little bit, you know. Oh, they had that thing, but 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 um, 1971 Bowie, right? Cold right. Bowie. Um, it, it's Ziggy. otherworldly. Ziggy. It's Ziggy. It's otherworldly, but it's not too far off. It, you can still tap your toes to it. Um, again, just the vocal tone. Yeah, 
the quality of it was very much exactly that that delivery um standout part for a 15 minute track for me would be the c section of this okay. um the, the i like the of, last one te- telephone complex that would be broken down to like minute. that stuff actually let me part go to D. my notes here because i did i did put the uh yeah that might be the one you're thinking the about part D, there you go yeah right before we get into restless skylight and all that stuff um, yeah, so this is Tansta Lemming from Among Duel 2, released 1971. Uh, we've just gotten through the side A, and, and we're following uh, specific instructions here, right? So we're doing half Correct. a joint for the side A, because this is this is a double album. Um, anything that stood out for you on your end, other than the bass parts and that D section? No, uh, if you'd heard, if you've heard other Among Duel two uh if you heard like phallus day or yeti's mm. really famous album. that's yeah yeah yeah. that those are the looking I if think you yeti, look for anything i'm gonna do that's what you're gonna come up i think with. yeti was um before this one like this is like the right before it so it's similar uh and i'm on duel has its cool little um calling cards yeah they have a thing yeah. kraut rock the best part about kraut rock to me is that the fact that like no way does not sound like Amundul and Amundul does not sound like Kraftwerk and et cetera, et cetera, you know? Right. But it does sound like everybody lived around the same neighborhood, kind of collaborating in and out with each other. And I think this album um, has very strong musicianship, but it, it's also very um, loose. It doesn't feel stiff. It's loosey goosey. It's hippie ish. Yeah. And, and they have a little bit more blues influence which a lot of times is not really apparent but not, at all yeah yeah but not but not in a, but not in a bad tinge it's no, like, no no it no, no, no to be like it's 79 71 71 yeah 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 yeah, yeah. They, they, have, they have good jams they have good jams it's of the time it's great so uh come on guys let's spark it up here and let's go for a, a side b here lead the way restless skylight transistor child so uh, that's where we're going folks Ooh, yeah Smoke if you got him. And we're back. All right. So I, I fell in love with this track. This was the first track that I wrote down on my notes about this album. Oh, um, so you like side B more than side A? Yes. I do not. Interesting. Yep, what, like uh, what what drops you? Let me say what I like first. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I like the. I like that we discovered this uh, sort of um, ambientation. It's not ambient music, but it creates a picture before the music starts. Um, and it broke me away from the Blues Jam 71 that we were talking about before, the hippy dippy shit, in a different, strange way. This was a more... Music took a more serious tone for me without it losing, without losing its playfulness. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, it, it's, it feels like a different band. But it's I understand what we're going for here, just because that first track was so long. I know that what we're getting into is a couple more tracks that are uh, more storytelling. What what lost you in this track? Um. Well, you're correct. Like, I, is there any sense it sounds a different band? Well, on side A, all the songs were written by Chris Carer, right? And on side B, all the songs written by John uh, Winzero. Mm-hmm. And uh, or Wine Zero, how, how how do you pronounce his name, folks? Come on, just give me the, the Wine the, Zero. Correct. I would go with Wine Zero. Yeah, well, it's probably not correct. Both W E I N Z I E. Weinzel, 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 something like that. John Weinzel. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I just don't like the songs as much. To, to mm. overall, it's um. And to me, it's it's not as um, see. I don't I don't view it as much as uh, so separate um, a thing, right? Like like to me, it's the same sort of yeah. It's the same sort of band with another guy writing it. It's it, it's not such a big departure from side A in my view. Okay, interesting to me. Yeah, um, it's still good, right? Like like if, if I'm I'm rating it like. 
out of ten, it's like I don't know. It's like a seven. A seven. Okay, that's that's good. Oh yeah, six or seven would be good. I think it's a it's at a good place to put when you're talking about a double album, and uh, you're talking about different songwriting or a composer for a section. I think putting it on the B side is the real safe bet to make it the cream filling to a sandwich. Um, and... Side of the side, I I felt I I, I never was a. Um... Uh, bored or, or looking at time or anything. I, I, I felt myself doing that with side B a little bit. Interesting. Interesting. Hello. We had a little bit of uh, technical difficulties. We are rolling here. So this is the first time that we're going into a C and a D side for smoke him if you got him. Um, correct. Correct. And and so I, I want I want you to give the fine fine folks that listen to to this wonderful podcast, which by the way has just been uh, taken up by four other independent distributors, including Google. Um, let's give them a little bit of the background of the, of, of the record here so they can catch up with us. The album we're listening to and uh, the whole deal. Go ahead, go ahead, Oracle. Please, enlighten us. Tans, tans, tans der Lemmings by Amandul 2. And it's a pressing from and, 1971. Uh, it, 71. It, I, I don't know if, you, if people know much about... I mean, see... Amandul, like I'm sure this is interesting to me. Uh, if you know anything about Krautrock, I think Amandul is one of the bands that you're going to know. It's one of those that you can find almost anywhere. It, it, you know, it shows up a lot. Like they're not, they're not like super underground in terms of Krautrock bands. Yeah, and, you know, that's uh, not saying much, right? Like that's 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 how far you're going down the rabbit hole. Yeah. So. I mean, if you're listening to us, you're hip already. So I'm assuming you already know Amandul too. Exactly. Right? So exactly. So you know, it, it, it's sort of like high school giant, and I think it, I, I feel the same way. It's like if you don't know Amandul too, just go fuck yourself. It's just not. There you go. But you know, it's beautiful that you brought it to that point because I did want to bring up the artwork. Mm, always, folks, folks. We always talk about this every now. I did tell you had to love the artwork. The artwork was was so so cool. Um, Makes you just want to do acid, just straighten your eye. Not only right? that, just... not only that, but it reminds me of the Cro Magnon reissue uh, work. <laughs> it gives you the skeletons. Yeah. It gives you the the fiery red blood. It gives me death, and it gives me rebirth. It gives me all of it in one sitting, without it being too hippy dippy. But uh, the base of it is a red color, um, 1971 font, and and work. And this is a gate. This is this is a double album, right? So you would open this oh, album yeah. in a different way. So you would have an extended version of the artwork on the inside of this. This is why it's important to like, if you are able to find this album. Now, let me ask you this one. And this, what, how much yeah, this is one's one's, how much this how much is, is this one find. going for? Oh, you get this one easy. You get this one for fifty bucks. There you go. Pretty, pretty much anywhere. I don't like. It's not that hard. Not that hard to find this one in terms of a uh, price. So well, there you go, folks. Try to find. Try to find a good one and, and send it out. This get is, me one and send me one. This is by far. Jeez, I'll, I'll keep it going. There you go. This is by far uh, the the cheapest uh, record you can find online because of how many copies were made of, of it. So so it's easier to to you know to acquire. But. Um, do you want to give them a little bit of the rules? What we're going to do here with side C and D? What what joint are they supposed to be on? The third joint, the fourth Just, joint? Cup of coffee? No, no. You, hopefully, you got the coffee going here. Uh, hopefully, you have your phones down. You're not like again scrolling, looking. No, we're focused on trying smoking to, trying to them get and try to get them. try to get into this album, guys. Come on, there you go. join join us with the journey here, please. Uh, we're going to side C for the first time ever. Uh, the Marilyn Monroe Memorial Church is the is uh, the name of this song. Oh, I'm getting on the wonderful Tans der Lemmings by Amandul Two. So smoke if you got them, folks. Join us in their side. All right. So so side C. Finally, the acid kicks in. You know, and it meets you ferocious, aggressively, violently. Just relax. Just. In such a great way. Uh, every time that we get to a side, I say, well, this is my favorite side. This is my favorite mm. side. Uh, yeah. This this record made me uh, made me feel good feelings. This cut made me feel great feelings. Um, and these guys really rock. These guys really threw down in this area. Once again, can we talk about the drummer? The drummer? Uh, we can. P- Peter Leopold. Oof. 
Mr. Leopold, I, uh, I'm tipping my hat to you. Uh, you gave me life. You were the cup of coffee I needed. Um, and what's interesting is, like in the other bands where there was a lot of other people like playing percussion, in this band, it basically, it's, he's the only one listed as playing anything. But that's the greatest thing about it because everything that Drums, is being percussion played, and nothing else. Yeah, right? but everything like, everything else is organs, you know. Yeah, the usual, and you know, they got the church motif and whatnot. But when you have a single percussionist. It's a very different story because that guy is thinking about every part that's being played. And when you hear this, and this is one of the main things that happens in records from the 70s, when you had anybody like playing tambourine and maracas and all that shit, you would start filling in gaps that didn't need to be filled. This album doesn't have wasted space when it comes to percussion. It's well thought out. It's to the point. There's not a lot of fat to trim. You know, I mean, these guys put out four, four albums in one sitting and it's only four sides, you mean. four sides um and it's only gotten better since the first uh cut uh this demotes my so this second is your favorite side this is my favorite side so far mm. so what i like about it is that uh those slight criticisms that we talked about how uh there's a little bit of tingy blues yes there's a little bit of the the time period of the 70s and this one uh, in the way of the um how they sort of uh, melt it is of the time also, yeah. but it's not as uh yeah, but it's not uh, acid cheesy. freak out. It's not acid freak. No, 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 no. Yeah. This is a band that has a point. They're not just like, come on guys, let's get together and play some blues. No, no, no. This is, this is a band with a serious point and a mission really in making this album. I, I can't even imagine. Well, they would be aware of Tangerine Dream and, and, Popple Vu and all that. This song right? makes are... you think that they were aware and they wanted to destroy them. <laughs> so, again, I can't stress enough how much the artwork goes so well with this 1970s. With this side, I think, specifically. It really, really, because now, now the skeletons in the middle, the focal point of the artwork, come alive. Right? We're looking yeah. at the rebirth of this dead carcass that has been in the top from the beginning, you know? And it's almost been this really cool. Uh, this really cool journey. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, get on our level. Smoke them if you got them. Correct. I, and I have good news for you, too. Go ahead. We have one more side, folks. Oof. Oof. So finish up what you got. Yeah. Put your big boy pants on. Yeah. Take a sip of that coffee. Ready. You know, and, and let's get on that last side, folks. And join us on their side. Smoke them if you got them, please. Let's do it. <laughs> Well, is this now? This is my this is my favorite side. Is this a fucking perfect album? This is my favorite side. I I'm with you right here. I'm demoting my third move to the fourth move. Uh, this is a top to bottom jewel of a record. This one, this one, this is the side that rocked to me the most. You know? Yeah. I dug it. I dug it a lot. The guitar work is impressive. Yep. The energy is impressive. And uh, can we bring back Mr. Bassman? Yes, uh, bass, and then the guitar, like you said, was it's cool. Like he he did some cool, interesting little uh, dive bombs on the uh, dive bombs. Bar. The way that he attacked his uh, spaces were in traditional 1971 blues jam that we were already like thinking about. Like this is really the evolution of a band in the studio finding their sound, not only playing and jamming live, but like finding something that is creating a bigger piece. I can't stress enough how important the artwork to this album goes to every single section of this record. And the la last song rocks hard too, man. Toxicological, wh toxicological whispering. It, it might be the deliverance. And, and, and all these um, uh, songs on this side are all uh, like co-written with the, the band, you know, the, the, the main band. So yeah, even though, even though cool. there are, are the main, you know, the main person keeps being the main person. Uh, there's no other tracks written by John as side uh, B uh, he he got his chance, but but this is a different thing. Um, I don't have anything else to say, but this is a wonderful album, and you should get some copies and send them to us over to Smoke Them if you got them. Can can we go to side D? That is side D, my friend. Wait, I'm I'm stoned. We did yeah. side D. Yeah. <laughs> that was side D, folks. There you go. Um, I had a question for you, since you look up uh, yes. more about this uh, album. Uh, is this album produced by the band? Hmm. Interesting. Who produced this? I don't know who produced this. 
Um, I just wonder who would be brave enough to be yeah. like, hey, guys, go into the studio. You guys do it. I mean, there should be a producer here, but it just really sounds like a lot of their own call. Yeah, when I looked it up earlier, I didn't uh, I didn't remember to look that up. Or, or at least if there is somebody, it's nobody of note. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I, I, I truly do not know. Well, I'll put it in the notes for the podcast uh, on the bottom and uh, in the YouTube feed. Um, we don't. I had a question for you. Yeah, we don't. We don't rate it here, but man, this 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 one goes right up top with the artwork as well. You know, you were supposed.